New York City basketball. Oh, it's awesome, man. It's New York point guards. Uh, long time, long time coming. I'm glad it's, it's out now. So I want to give a big shout out to Kevin Durant, production company, who's doing this in New York. It's great, man. This is how I learned the game, you know, through great point guards such as Kenny Smith, Mark Jackson, Rod Strickland, and the best, uh, Pearl Washington. How, how do you feel like that competition prepared you, you know, for Georgia Tech and the next level in the it, NBA? It, it, it prepared me, you know, awesome. You know, I was able to compete against the best. So I knew going into, you know, Georgia Tech and my class of, 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 of senior year in high school that, you know, hey, I went against the best. So it, it, was, it was easy for me. Coaching at Fisk, you know, they just had an HBCU showcase down at uh, Vegas Summer League. What does it mean to, you know, bring your, your profile to an HBCU, a small school? Yeah, that? it was, that, that was awesome. The HBCU connected with the NBA. It was down in um, uh, Vegas for the first year. You know, I get two of my players get good contracts overseas. So it just was great. Yeah, you were cool. Sabrina, what's been the biggest adjustment going from college to the uh, WNBA? Um, just the level of play, um, obviously with elevated. So I would, I would say that's definitely um, Two the biggest and most drastic. Who's your toughest player to guard so far? Candace Parker probably <laughs> gets switched on at her. You got switched on Candace Parker in the post? Yeah. Oh man, it was barbecue chicken. Yeah. Oh, did you hold your own? Uh, half and half, but she's put me in the basket a few times. What was the best advice Kobe gave you? Um, I would just say stay true to yourself. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. How do you reflect on the fact that you know you were one of the few that came from the street ball scene straight to the NBA? How do you reflect on that? Uh, it, it's del I'm, I'm excited, delighted um, to be one of those guys. Uh, so many guys before me that were great, great uh, so-called playground players that for whatever reason, reasons hindered them from making it and going as far as I did. And I'm just happy that I uh, was able to do it to, to show the, the youngsters that's come behind me that, you know, everyone's path that's in this film is different. And my path probably is the, <laughs> the one that is different. And uh, to let the youngsters understand that different is okay. And just, you know, keep, keep persevering and uh, keep believing, have faith. What was the biggest adjustment you had to make once you got to the league? The biggest adjustment was was uh, getting the coaches to, uh, to adjust to, to the fact that I'm not, I wasn't just a, uh, a playground player. That I was a guy who lived the game, studied the game, and, and, and watched all my guys that played before me, and I, I really could play the game with the best of them. How do we get the Knicks back on track, Skip, man? We, we, we uh, need a championship here with the Knicks. They got Brunson. They might get Donovan Mitchell. What, what do you think about that? That's a start. That's a start. You get the guys. You know, once you start getting the guys that want to be here, because that was that was that's what was good about the past. The, uh, when the Ewings, the Oakleys, the Masons, uh, Starks, all that, they wanted to be here. So make sure you get the guys, the players that want to be here, and they want to uh, help turn the franchise around. Hey, you, you mentioned Mason. What is it about Queens that, that produced so many good balls? <laughs> Can Queens seem to have the best of the world? No, uh, we, 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 we still putting them out there. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I guess we're, we fly under the radar in Queens. I think everyone thinks of Brooklyn and, 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 and Harlem and the Bronx. But with Queens, we fly under the radar. Nice yep. Nancy, what was the best advice that Clyde ever gave you? Clyde would just tell me just to be confident, be prepared, never really worry about things that I can't control, and just always play hard. And he did he did tell me when I was 22 years old, make sure you make everybody around you good. And that became a hallmark of me. What, what do you think about the state of the Knicks right now? How, how do we get back to, uh, to prominence? I think the Knicks are going to be just fine. You know, Julius Randle's going to bounce back, have a great year. If some of these trades bring, you know, you just signed Brunson, who had a hell of a year with, with the Mavericks. I think he's going to be a good piece. He's not going to be a number one, but he could be a two or three and a consistent player. And I think his experience in Dallas is going to, you know, galvanize other players, you know, to come here. Thank you. Talk about the impact that these guys are in profile this documentary had on your career? Oh, man. Uh, you know, go all the way going back to Pearl Washington. You know, uh, my dad, you know, uh, grew up watching him play. You know, actually grew, grew up uh, playing against him. And uh, he had an impact on my dad. So when I was uh, being taught from my dad, my dad, you know, was telling me about, you know, Pearl Washington's moves and uh, his handle, how smooth he was. So uh, Pearl Washington has a big impact on my game. You know, watching guys like Washington on TV. Um, 
just his smoothness, his his, you know, his, uh, his grace. And then playing against guys like uh, you know, Omar Cook and Tali Brown and uh, Andre Barrett, you know, playing against those guys growing up, you know, helped shape my game the way it is today. Well, what did you take from the NYC game to the NBA? Uh, just our, 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 our grip. You know, um, one thing that you know, New York City basketball definitely embodies is being able to, you know, play with some kind of you know toughness. And uh, you know, only the tough survive here in New York. If, if, you, if you're not tough, you're not going to survive here in New York at all. How did the Knicks get back on track, man? We, we need a championship. This we they need a New York City point guard. <laughs> They, they, they need, they need. Is, is Jalen Brunson that guy? Oh, he's not sold. He's not sold. How about Spider Mitchell? Man? They might get Spider Mitchell. Man. I'm not mad at Spider Mitchell. Okay. But he's not a point guard. <laughs> hey, he played, he played point guard. He played on and off with, with, the, with Utah Jazz, man. You're right. You're right. Do you see the, do, could you see the two of them coexisting in the backcourt? Two six one guards? Excuse me? Do you, could you see the two of them coexisting in the backcourt? Oh, Brunson one? and, uh, and Spider. Yeah, I can see that. You know, definitely in, the, in this time, in this league. Yeah, that's not a that's not a bad backcourt at all. All right, man. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, Nick just picked up Jalen Brunson, man. What, what type of player they? Oh, get? great. Brunson. Like Jalen Brunson is nice. Like he's a good player. Like I said, he's gonna be consistent every day. And you know, like I said, no people don't know how much consistency matters until they have a person in their life that they can count on every day. And high or low, Jalen Brunson is gonna be the same person. So. Thanks a lot, T Mac. What was uh, Skip to my Lou like as a teammate on the Rockets? Man? He was. He was very competitive. He was hilarious. Um, the prankster of the team, but but fun, fun to be around. Did he cross you up, man? Did he cross you up? No, no, no. You know, I I, I ripped that shit for skin. Now, first year OBL in the books, man. Finished up in Vegas. How, how do you reflect on that first season? It was it over exceeding my expectations, man. Uh, great feedback from everybody. Everyone, everyone is looking forward to next uh, season. The players are happy about it. It's just really all about the opportunity that these guys, you know, have, have never really um, gotten in their careers. So I'm happy for them, and uh, they happy, and it's a great thing. It's what's going on right now. So you know you going. You know your time with the Knicks, man. Knuckleheads podcast. You and Q had a laugh about that time with the that Knicks. Was that it was a great time. So tell, came, tell me a little I, story I, I about in, that, man. I came in there thinking, okay, I'm looking around the locker room. We got some talent around here. We got, yeah. we got enough. You know, I've been on worse teams. I know I'm not. I'm not in my prime. I'm not that dude. But I'm looking around like, okay, we got a chance of making the playoffs. And you know, Q humbled me real quick. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was pretty bad once you know we got the playing games and it just it wasn't a good look. Do you remember the garden reaction in the game against the Thunder in your crazy. first game? Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. You know, it gave me chills. That was and that was sheer adrenaline that I was running on because once react, you know, I just came off the Michael right. surgery, so once once uh, reality kicked in. I was horrible. <laughs> well, let, let's say the Knicks, uh, they got Brunson, they got Jalen Brunson. So let's say they get Donovan Mitchell. You see that backcourt coexisting? Yeah, I think they'll do well, but I, I don't think it really moves the needle for them. Yeah. Well, what do you What do you think we need to do to get back to the promise? We need a superstar, bro. We need you to come back, man. Uh, we... <laughs> I'm so cooked. <laughs> Thanks you are so man. super cooked. Appreciate it. Appreciate the time. Uh, what, what does it mean to you right? to have a documentary, you know, highlighting the impact uh, on this city and the, the game of basketball? Yeah, it really is unbelievable. And uh, I think about the history of the point guard position. It didn't just start with Earl Washington, Mark Jackson, Kenny Smith. Kenny Hutchinson he started way before us. So shout out to the OGs, guys like Lenny Wilkins and Bob Cousy and Tiny Archibald, the only man to ever lead the league in scoring and assist in a single season. So I'm honored that the story is being told and that Kevin Durant, Rich Kleiman, and company at Showtime has given us a platform to tell the story. The effect of the point guard play from New York City, play in general from New York City, and the culture of hip hop itself. Uh, it, it's a dynamic story. And one I'm to be how, how do you feel like the, the New York City game helped you at St. John's and then ultimately into the league? Well, the New York City game didn't just help me at St. John's or in the NBA. It helped me in life. Just that New York City edge, toughness, willingness to embrace trials and tribulation, adversity, and, and find a way to gut it out and, 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 and come out on top. The ability to embrace the bright lights and not be afraid. New York City gives you something that I believe nowhere else in the country has the ability to give you. Man, no.
What's up, baby? Trying to look clean as you. Don't do it, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. You good? Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, Thanks yeah. again, baby. Like that, uh, you know, Nick's getting so Jalen Brunson. Time? What type of play do you think they're getting in Brunson? Tremendous player. The guy that I watched grow up. I had the honor of playing with his dad and Rick. Uh, he's much better than Rick. And I'm proud, proud of him the way he's uh, had his career start. And this is going to be a great opportunity for him. So the future's awfully bright for him. And he has a well-deserved contract. Now, now they, they may go out there and get Donovan Mitchell. As a coach, could you see those two guys coexisting in the backcourt, especially defensively? Well, if, if they go get Donovan Mitchell, you're winning this league with talent, superior talent. And he's an elite talent. And it'd be a great gift for the Knicks. Thanks a lot, man. So what do you think about Jalen Brunson coming to the Knicks? A shout out to Jalen Brunson and his dad. I think he's um, incredible. He put in a lot of work, and he's at the NBA at the right time because if he was in our era, that would have been like three million, but now that's like twenty. You know what I mean? So shout out to Jalen. You know, go buy a ton of real estate and go and actually bring a championship here to New York City. We need it. Shout out to Brooklyn. You know, I love Brooklyn. You know, I played at the Navy Yard and so in the hole, but the Knicks need that title, so Jalen Brunson, bring it to us. The Knicks traded for Donovan Mitchell. How do you see that backcourt working out? Um, well, six um, that, that, that's incredible. Uh, I didn't know Jalen was 6'4". 6'1", 6'1". 6'1". Donovan's 6'1"? That's what they told <laughs> Donovan's 6'2", man. <laughs> Donovan's Donovan got to be 6'2", but I think it'd be great. Donovan's a winner. I don't think he's top 20 in the NBA, but he's right there. Right, so hopefully he can get over the hump and we support him. If he can, he's coming to New York, we don't know yet. I know yet. All right, so he's not a New York guy yet, so we ain't gonna talk about Donovan. Until, uh, wait till he's signed and then we'll talk about him. If you win, you can go the rest of the offseason. What offseason? 